In this video, we're going to paint the Land Cruiser, but the goal is to make it look like we didn't paint it. Basically, I want this side of the Land Cruiser to look like this side of the Land Cruiser. So to do this, I had some paint mixed up, and the plan is to paint this whole side of the Land Cruiser and then beat it up to make it look like the other side. I already did this on the hood just to test out to see if this was going to work. One side of this hood is the original paint, and the other side is the side that I painted. And it's pretty hard to tell which is which. So I'm happy with the results of this, and now I'm ready to move on to the rest of the cruiser. So I started off by sanding down the panels with some 80 grit. This removed all the surface rust. It also gave me a good surface to put some additional Bondo on and then start painting. Then I laid down some new Bondo, let that dry, and sanded it back. Then it was time to lay down some primer. You can tell after sanding through the paint that there are three different colors. There's a red primer at the base, a gray primer, and then the color of the car. So I started with this red automotive primer, I followed that with some gray primer, and then I was ready to spray on the color. I sprayed this on with my paint gun, and this is a single stage paint. I had this paint matched to the existing color of the truck. I didn't go by the color code, I took a small piece of the truck into the paint shop and I had my guy mix it up, and he does a really good job of matching the color. So this came out really well. But for the paint, I wanted to put it on pretty light, because again, I want to be able to sand through it, and add chips to it. I want to make it look beat up to match the other side. So after removing the plastic and the masking tape, it was time to start chipping away at the paint. Uh, I didn't really let it get fully dry. I wanted to kind of attack it with a few different approaches to see how I could age it. So I started off with some 80 grit sandpaper. I kind of scuffed it up around the edges. And anywhere that there was a remaining dent that would have had scratches on it, I added scratches to that area as well. Here you can start to see that red primer showing through, and there's also a hint of the gray primer. After this I took a screwdriver and I chipped away at the paint in places where there were actual chips in the paint. So these are chips that I did not sand out, this is a small dent that I left, again because I want this to look as original as possible. And so what I'm doing while the paint's still wet is I'm going through and I'm scraping the paint away in these chips to bring them back. Then I went over the whole surface with a rag that I had dipped in acetone. This actually worked really well. This helped thin the paint in some areas, so, so it showed kind of a, a wear mark. Not so much as a scratch, but something that just looks like it's been worn down over time. So this was very helpful. After that, I took a piece of string that had several nuts on it, and I just started smacking the car all over. This gives the effect of rock chips all over the paint. Then after letting it dry overnight, I came back and sanded it down with some thousand grit sandpaper. I use this as a way to thin the paint out even more and kind of make it look worn off and aged. It helped quite a bit. After that I buffed it out. Now, I've already buffed out the rest of the original paint, so it does actually have a shine to the whole car. So this will match basically the existing shine on the rest of the car. And there you go. That's what it looks like when I'm done. It definitely has an aged look. Especially around the edges, it looks worn and old. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. You'll see later when I do a full walk around that it doesn't exactly match the other side. It still looks a little bit newer than the other side. But overall, I'm very pleased with it. So then I moved on to the front fender. This is definitely the worst panel of the whole car. There's a lot of Bondo in this fender, and I've looked for another fender, but I just couldn't find one. Plus, the inside of this fender well still has all the original paint on it, which I like. It keeps the engine bay looking all original. So I'm going to go ahead and use this fender. So the first step was to grind out all the existing Bondo. I used the same stripping disc that I used on the inside of the truck when I did the bed liner. And I stripped off all the Bondo down to bare metal. Then I added some new Bondo, sanded that back, and then I was ready to start painting it. So just like before, I added the red primer, and then gray primer, and then the color. I did the same thing to this section of the body as well. Red primer, gray primer, and then color. And I used the same methods to distress this area and the front fender so that they match the rear quarter panel. Then it was time to apply the bed liner to the inner fender wells. First I stripped back all the existing paint and rust. Then I went over it with this epoxy primer and this adhesion promoter. 
After that, I sprayed in the Raptor liner. I ended up having just enough left from the kit to do all four fender wells and the cover over the transmission. Now I will say that spraying this on didn't go quite as smoothly as it did the first time. I wasn't getting the same flow coming out of the gun as I did when I first set this up and when I painted the inside of the truck. I later found out that there was something stuck inside the gun. I didn't clean it well enough. So towards the end I actually started getting back to the same type of spray pattern that I had originally. But luckily this was the inner fender wells so it really didn't make that much of a difference and it still went down very easy. It's still much easier than putting down paint. But I will say if you're going to do this in two separate phases where you're going to let the gun sit for weeks or months at a time like I did, make sure that it's cleaned out really well before you use it again. And here's the end result. I'm really happy with the way this came out. Again, you can barely see where I welded in the patches and I didn't even do as good of a job underneath here as smoothing them out as I did on the top surface because you're never really going to see them. But overall it came out really, really well. Here are the front fenders and the transmission cover. So everything's done now, everything looks great. I'm really pleased with the Raptor liner. It was very easy to apply. I like the way that it looks, so I recommend it. So after that, I moved on to the side steps. I repainted both of these side steps and now I'm gonna be applying some new material to it. I found this new diamond patterned rubber material that matches the existing pattern of the original material, so I'm gonna be putting that on the side steps. I traced out a pattern, cut it out, Use some spray adhesive to stick it down. Then I drilled some holes through the rubber and I attached the top ring using a bunch of new hardware that I bought on Amazon. And there you go, two new side steps. I'm pretty happy with how they came out. So now it's time to install them. I installed them using all new stainless steel hardware that I got from Amazon. It seems to be a cheap place to get this stuff and uh, it shows up within a day or two of ordering it, so it's pretty convenient. After that, I added the spare tire carrier. This is the carrier off the 72. This truck didn't actually come with one, but I still had this one from the 72. Now, because the tires I'm running are wider than stock, I had to space this mount out in order to be able to put the spare tire on it. So I just used some tubing, spaced it out, and then painted that section black. Now, I started to figure out what I'm going to do with this hole in the side of the truck. Somebody had a CB antenna here, and my plan was to cover it up with this reflector. I was going to put a reflector like this on both sides of the truck, but unfortunately I only have one of them and that one's broken and these things are extremely expensive for some reason. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or if I'm just going to get another CB antenna. But basically, other than that, it's the outside's pretty much done. So did I accomplish my goal? Did I paint one side of the truck and still make it look old and beat up like the other side of the truck? Well, kind of. I mean, it looks pretty good, especially from a distance. You can't really tell that one side has been painted. When you look close, you can definitely tell that this side looks a little bit different than the other side, but you really have to kind of compare one side to the other right after each other to notice the difference. So overall, I'm very happy with how this came out. Once I get the top on, I think it's going to be even less noticeable. So there's still a lot of work to do on this. I still have to put in the air conditioning. I have to repaint the top, fiberglass top, and do a new headliner in it. I need to recover the seats. So there's still a lot to do. But that's all for this video, so thanks for watching guys. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.